everyone, I hope you're doing awesome today. I want to show you the honeycomb and some of the neat things that you can do with it. Um, on my pieces, I've actually done a little bit of fussy cutting. So this is my crazy template, but let me show you what a honeycomb is. It is a square intersecting another square. But how do you know how close to put those squares? This side is the same as this side, this side. So all six sides are the same size. So if you were to draw a square, draw a line, stop it at exactly one and a quarter inches, which is the size of mine. And then you're gonna line up that other square at this end. And then you're just gonna connect those two sides. I really hope that makes sense. Um, squares are actually going to be the connector pieces for this project as well. So I kind of started to show you a little bit on my template. I basically took the honeycomb and then gave it a border so that if I want to fussy cut around a certain shape, I can. This right here is a water soluble marker. And what I would do is I would say, okay, I want that pink bunny to be on my honeycomb. And then I would use my water soluble marker and go all the way around. This is a pretty wide border right there, but that's okay. It gives me some wiggle room once I start laying out my honeycomb or the fabric on my honeycomb. So here are the ones I've actually done. Let me show you how I would baste the honeycomb. Oops, I have some threaded needles, but I don't have them knotted yet. Well, that went spectacularly wrong. Let me try again. Okay, so here's one of my shapes. Now, if I was doing a fussy cut, I would want to make sure that I'm folding it so that my picture is exactly where I want it. I'm not fussy cutting this one, so I'm just going to finger press all the way around so that I have some nice creases to work with on the sides. My fabric is less likely to slip. Um, if you want to have a hole punched in the center of each, you can do that as well. And then you can use your pen to hold it in place. So the first thing I do is I finger press all the corners. Now I'm going between the paper and the fabric and just taking a few little bites of fabric with the needle. Now when I get up here to the top, there are two different ways you can do this. You can stab it from the outside and go in, or what I like to do is to go slightly under this corner, pick up some fabric, and then come back out. It, there is a reason for it, so let me finish basting this one and I will show you why I do it that way. You don't have to, but in my opinion, it makes life just a little bit easier. I truly hope you're liking these videos that I am making. Um, it is free to subscribe, and all you have to do is hit the little subscription button. If you wanna be notified each time a video is released, hit that little bell button and it'll turn on notifications. So your device, whatever you use, will let you know that I have created and released a new video. Okay, so I'm here at the end. And I'm gonna go ahead and just finish that off. So I have this here and I have another one done. This one actually has the thread going over that corner now what's tricky about that is when you go to put these together, 
if that corner's in your way or it's basted down, it's harder to fold it back when you're whip stitching. But if you have it so it's basted from underneath, you can really push that side out of your way. I hope that makes sense. So that when you're whip stitching or flat back, you can really move that corner out of your way. Okay, so here's one of the layouts that you can do. Many people that do this pattern only do fussy cut. As you can see, I've only done the fussy cut on the center row. So you'd put these four together and then these four and then two, four, six, eight, if you want to keep going, you would just continue with two here, two here, two here, and two here. That would be your next row. And then you would do this section. So you would just keep growing it. Now remember how I said the squares would be your connectors. So I have another one here. And when I want to connect the blocks, I can connect them this way or I can connect them this way and just keep growing it. Now, like I said, you can make these as large as you want before you connect them. Another fun layout for these, if you don't really want to think about a pattern, what about if you just did rows? Just did them as this type of layout. So it's almost like you have a zigzag stripe pattern going. So that's another option. As you can see, so you could just literally keep going like that. You could have rows that repeat, or you could have all completely different rows. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these pieces that I've created, but um, I will keep you updated. Find me on my Facebook page. I would love to see your honeycombs um, that you make. I'd love to answer all your questions and it's just fun to be part of the group. So please like and subscribe. Find me on Facebook. I look forward to hearing from you. Happy sewing.